In this video, we're going to learn how to value zero coupon bonds. Just a quick note though, if you haven't watched the fundamentals section, please go back to that now and watch that thoroughly before coming back here. That's because you need to know and fully understand important concepts like the time value of money and the process of discounting, which drives the entire bond valuation process. I'm going to assume that you watched the fundamentals video and that you understand the process of discounting future cash flows. All right, so let's have a quick recap. When we looked at the types of bonds, we looked at a zero coupon bond and said that it's a bond that does not pay any coupons. In other words, it pays a zero coupon, hence the name. So given that it doesn't pay any coupons, the only thing it does pay is the par at maturity. And with that in mind, zero coupon bonds will always trade at a discount because the par is the only reward for the investors. So the price P will always be lesser than the par value for all zero coupon bonds. Again, this is because the only reward for investors is the par value. If the price was greater than the par value, or even if it was equal to it, then there'd be no buyers. Because if it's equal to the par value, then you wouldn't be getting compensated for the effects of the time value of money. And if it's greater than the par value, that would be even worse. Now, of course, valuing zero coupon bonds is perhaps one of the easiest things you can do. If we think back to the timeline for bond payoffs in the general case, this is what it looked like, right? And you should hopefully be quite familiar with this timeline for now. We said that for a zero coupon bonds, coupons are equal to zero, and therefore you're essentially getting zero as your coupons, and this par value uh, at maturity or in year N. For a zero coupon bond then, this timeline simplifies to this. We can use exactly the same thinking to get to the formula for the price of a zero coupon bond. If you recall, when we looked at the fundamentals, we said that the general equation for the price of a bond is this, right? So you've got the coupons at time t discounted by one plus the yield to maturity. And we're summing up all of these coupons, starting from the first one where t is equal to one and going all the way up to and including the nth observation. And then you've also got this par value, which you're getting in the year n, which we're discounting by one plus the yield to maturity raised to the power of n because we're discounting it over n years. For a zero coupon bond, of course, the c is equal to zero. So this essentially just becomes uh, the par value discounted back to today. In other words, when we're valuing a zero coupon bond, its price is simply equal to the par value discounted by one plus the yield to maturity over n years. Let's look at how this works in an example. Consider Swindon PLC, which is issuing a zero coupon bond with a par value for hundred pounds to be paid in one year's time. What is the price of this bond today if the yield is 7%? So we have a par value here of hundred pounds, the yield of 7% and the time to maturity or N, which is equal to one. The price of the bond is then easy to calculate. Right? You've got the price at time t must be equal to the par, which we're going to earn in the year n, discounted by 1 plus ytm to the power of n. In Swindon's case, the par is 100 pounds, the yield is 0 0.07 or 0 0.07, which is 7%. When you solve for that, you'll find that the price is equal to 93 pounds and 46 pence. Of course, this is lesser than the par value, which means that the uh, bond is trading at a discount, and that should come as no surprise. This is how we go about calculating the price of a zero coupon bond manually, but we can also calculate it on Excel. As you can see, I've just set out the names of the different variables that we're gonna use to compute the price using Excel's price function. Um, so the price function requires a settlement, which is the date today or the, the date that you're buying the bond, uh, the maturity, which is when the bond expires, the rate, which is the coupon rate, the YLD here refers to the yield, the redemption is the par value, and the frequency refers to uh, the frequency of the payment. So whether it's annually, semi-annually, or quarterly, or something else. So we're just gonna need to fill in the um, data over here. We've got a par value of 100 pounds for Swindon. The date of purchase, I'm just gonna set that as uh, the 1st of Jan in the year 2020. Uh, the date of expiration or maturity is one year later because Swindon's uh, a one year bond. So I'm just gonna add a year to this. And the coupon rate is 0% because this is a zero coupon bond. 
the yield, we were told is 7%, the frequency is one. And then it's just a simple case of applying Excel's price function and plugging in the variables. So we've got the settlement, which is the date of purchase, the maturity, which in our case is one year later, the rate, which is the coupon rate, the yield, 7%, the redemption, which is the par value, and the frequency, which in this case is one. And that's it. So you've got the price of 93 pounds and 47 pence, which is exactly what we had. Clearly applying it on Excel does make life a lot easier, but it's always good to know what Excel is doing or any other software for that matter, which is why I would strongly encourage you to calculate the price of bonds manually, especially during the early stages on your journey to bond valuation mastery. All right, hopefully this example makes sense. Let's take a look at another example and evaluate Warren B Inc, which is evaluating a bond which promises to pay $1,000 in four years time the bond has a 8.2% yield and is currently priced at 814.39. Advise Warren B Inc on whether it should buy this bond today. I'd like you to pause the video now and try solving it on your own because the process is exactly the same as with Swindon PLC, except that we're also asking you to analyze whether this is a good investment. And to give you a hint, the bond is currently overvalued. We're just gonna continue uh, solving for this. Like I said, it's exactly the same as in Swindon PLC. So it's the same formula that we apply. You've got the par at time n over one plus YTM to the power of n. The par value in this case is $1,000 and the yield to maturity is 8.2%, which is the same as 0.082. The maturity was four years, so n is equal to four. And when you solve for that, you'll find that the price is equal to $729.61. If you recall from the question, the bond was trading at 814.39, which means it's overvalued by $84.78. And therefore Warren B should not invest in this bond um, because they'd be paying $814 for something that's only worth $729. In the previous example, we learned how to solve for the price of the bond using Excel. You could also solve for the price using Google Sheets and it looks uh, very much like Excel, except it tends to give you a little more information um, on the variables then and there. And of course it's free to use, so in case you don't have Excel, you can just set it up this way, uh, like I've done, use exactly the same function, which is the price function, and the inputs are exactly the same as in Excel. So if you were to solve for this on Google Sheets, you'll find that it's equal to $729, which is pretty much the same as what we got. In summary then, we learned that zero coupon bonds are bonds that don't pay any coupons, they only pay a par at maturity. We said that given this fact, zero coupon bonds will always trade at a discount. In other words, the price P will always be lesser than the par for all zero coupon bonds. Finally, we learned that the value for zero coupon bond is equal to the present value of its par value with a discount rate equal to its yield. So the price of a zero coupon bond is simply equal to the par at time n divided by one plus the yield to maturity raised to the power of n. That's enough for me for now. Have a go at the quiz and I will see you in the next video.